Good morning and happy Thanksgiving everybody. I just got back from spending a couple months overseas and I'm very excited because waiting for me was this package containing a couple of repaired electrical boards for my broken Miller Airwave. Um, so in this video I'm going to go through the process of reinstalling these boards. It's going to be pretty straightforward, not very technical, mostly plug and play stuff, but there's not a whole lot of information about these machines online. So I figured anything that I could contribute might end up helping someone down the road. So for those of you that are not familiar with the Miller Airwave, this is a constant current tick and stick power source produced by Miller in the late 90s and early 2000s, mainly manufactured for Boeing for aluminum aircraft welding. Um, and for that reason, they are arguably some of the best aluminum TIG machines that you can purchase. A couple of downfalls though, since they have not been made in almost 20 years and they have been taken over by the Miller Dynasty, um, they're very hard to find and when they do break, they are no longer supported by Miller, so they're very hard to repair. But with that said, if you are watching this video because you have a broken Miller Airwave, you may be in luck because in the comments I'll include the contact information for the company that was able to repair these boards. What I'm going to start with is removing a couple of screws that hold this top panel on and then dropping this front face down and we will be able to access a lot of the internals of the machine. So on this back panel, there's a screw on the top and the bottom. Remove those and it will we'll reveal two screws on the center of the back of this top plate. And with those removed, you can lift up the back, slide it forward, and remove that. With that done, we can now take a um, flathead screwdriver. Inside of this crack, there's a screw in the center that if you remove, will drop down this front panel. There we go. So the boards I am going to replace on this machine are this meter board that is not present right now and all this board does is reads the current and outputs for the machine. It has the two little displays on it as you can see. And the gate driver board which you can see mounts to the back side of this panel right here. Um, everything is currently unplugged obviously and that's, that one's going to be a bit more difficult to replace but what we are going to do is start by removing this front panel by um, first of all unplugging everything so you don't risk um, dropping it and ripping anything out and then we're going to remove the two chains that hold the board up followed by the three bolts holding the hinge on with that removed we can then unplug these two boards with those unplugged we will then remove the um, just two bolts holding it in and slide that plate forward so that we can install the gate driver board on the back side. Just like that, I'll remove this and set it off to the side. So now that we are to the point where we are going to be physically touching these electrical boards, it's very important to wear something that will ground you um, and reduce the risk of having electrostatic ch charge. They make special bracelets for it. I have a disposable one I'm going to throw on. So as you can see with this panel slid forward, I now have lots of room to access um, where this board will be mounted. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through and wipe this area down from all the dust and then I will snap this board into place and plug everything in and then slide that plate back into place and bolt it in. So this is the meter board. I will save that for later. And here is my gate driver board. So as you can see, it's in a special um, electrostatic bag, so it avoids being shocked for any reason while it's being shipped. Um, I will go ahead and remove it. I learned 
when I was shipping these boards that if you don't have a bag like this and you need to either store or ship an electrical board, you can also wrap it in tin foil to avoid um, the possibility of that happening. So for the orientation of the board, um, you can see there's two grounding wires that point kind of towards the top two corners of the board. And then on the board itself, there are two tabs here that those will plug into. So the board is gonna face like that. And there are six holes around the board that will correspond with six clips that will hold the board into place on the machine. So we're gonna kinda hold the other cables out of the way, slide this board in and snap it into place. One clip at a time so that you don't um, put too much pressure on other parts of the board and flex it. All right, so with all six clips on, I'm gonna start by plugging in these two ground wires. Once again, make sure you support the back of the board so that you don't um, bend it too much. Those two on, um, let's see, we have a total of six plugs. So there's this one, and this goes to each of the IGBTs. Um, so that goes in the top center of the board. Um, just gently work it into place until it clicks, just like that. Another smaller plug with black or red and white wires, and these ones go to the MOSFETs um, on the bottom center of the board. Same thing, we're just going to lightly work it into place till it clips. And then we have these four plugs with all white wires. Um, these will only go into one plug, they don't really work in other ones, but you should also be able to see where, you know, where they want to go, where they've been sitting for 20 plus years. Um, so one at a time, I'm just going to lightly work it into place, holding the back side, just like that, just like that. Like that, and the last one, just like that. So as you can see, we have the two ground wires up top, um, the IGBTs plugged in here, the MOSFETs plugged in there, and then um, one, two, three, and four of these white plugs. Um, and all six of these snaps you want to make sure are fully gripping the board and with that said we will now um, slide the stainless piece back in place and proceed with plugging the front boards in. So as you do this you do want to make sure that you're not pinching any wires behind the board because the um, clearance does get fairly tight um, and there's a special way for each of those cables to go. I can see here I'm um, lightly pinching those two cables so I'm going to try to um, run them either above or below each other so that they're not um, hitting one another. With that done I am now going to take a flashlight and just double check behind it and make sure there's nothing pinched or running into each other that would be concerning for the future. All right, everything looks good. So the next step is going to be plugging all of these um, bottom plugs in. Uh, once again, very lightly taking your time. You don't want to push too hard and break something. And these cables over here, you can see there's two grounding cables, and same thing, there's two tabs marked out for them. So we're going to put them on the tabs. And then this one ribbon cable will connect the sequencer option board to the main board. And these ribbon cable plugs are pretty, pretty cool. 
when getting the pins lined up, because um, most of them have a couple dozen pins that are very small, um, make sure that you line them up perfectly, you're not forcing anything, and then all you do is push it into place, and there are two tabs on each end of the plug that will snap into place. Um, if you're going to remove this cable, you will literally just pull down on each of these little tabs and it wiggles um, the plug out. Same thing, so just push in very lightly. You can see those tabs fold in and then you can make sure it is on there completely by pressing those tabs together. So with that done, I now have both of these boards completely plugged in. Um, the leftover plugs, these guys will go to the control boards on that front panel we removed. So I'm gonna grab one bolt, line it up with the center hole on the hinge. With that one bolt in place, I'm now gonna go and put one of the chains on. So we're going to start plugging these back in. Um, most of these are pretty straightforward, but it always does help to double check. So I do have um, a lot of photos on my phone that just show where everything was before I laid hands on it. So all that's left is this bigger one, which is the cable that is going to go to the meter board. So next up, I'm going to unpackage the meter board and we're going to install it into place. So the part that blew on this board um, was actually one of these small capacitors, but the board, the board was looked very old and used. So I had Frank go through the entire board and as you can see, this looks brand new. I am just blown away. Obviously these have to line up with the two screens on the machine. Um, so just like this, we're gonna slide it into place. And one by one, lock those tabs into place to hold the board. I can see it goes like this, so I'm going to start by pushing this in, carefully lining up all the pins. We're going to push it till it bottoms out, and then follow this cable up. Same plug up top, carefully lining up the pins. With everything installed, I'm going to quickly give it a look over, make sure everything looks like it wants to be there, everything's plugged in, and then we can slowly slide this up and button it into place. I hope you all learned something from this video, and if you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you, and have a great Thanksgiving.